Okay, so you want to make sure that you have the following things checked. You want to check your uh, transform, transform pattern. You want to check your scale corners and make sure the double click to isolate is also checked. Once you're finished with that, let's say we're going to hit, we're going to click on units. On the left side of the preferences dialog box, make sure your settings match those shown in figure 32. We want to make sure this says inches, points, and points. And hit guides and grids. And make sure that you have your color set to cyan for style you want to put lines i'm hesitating because i'm having a hard time your book has it really small for color <laughs> we're going to click on color and we're going to make it light red make sure this um, grid line every one inch subdivisions need to be eight these two are checked and we're going to continue on page 1 slash 32. Note that you have options for showing your guides as a dot, but we're not going to do that. Then click Smart Guides on the left side of the preference. Then enter the settings sign with figure 34. We're going to change this to green for the color option. We're going to have um, these two first options need to be selected. And it looks like this should say 0, 45, 90, and 135. And the very bottom should say four points. We're going to Go ahead and leave everything just like this. And then we're going to move on. It says click user interface. Okay. User interface on the left side of the preference dialog box. And we want to, I think my book says, Okay, user interface on the left side of the preference dialog box. Make sure your settings match those shown on figure 35. The brightness slider defines how light and dark the illustrator, which we're fine with this medium tone right here. And then we're going to hit OK. All right, so now we're going to go back to Canvas. And we're going to open up, here's my canvas right here. We're going to open up that one slash two. Let's see if that downloaded for me. Move that up. Oh, here we go. It looks like I opened it up several times. I just couldn't see it at the bottom of my screen. And we're going to hit open. All right, so now we get into the fun stuff. So open one slash two AI. Now we're going to save it as objects. Save it in your H drive as objects. Mine's not saved yet. I'm not going to go through that. Click view on the menu bar. Verify that the bounding box command is, is set to bounding box. So we're going to go ahead, it's, it's because it says hide here, we know that the bounding box is actually showing. And if I click on an object, I can see that it is showing. Um, this line right here is considered the bounding box. Okay, so now we're going to click on our selection tool, which I already have mine selected, and then click the pink square to select it. As shown in figure 36, the paths and the anchor points that draw the square are revealed as the objects, as the objects, and it's 
all of its points in its center point. Click View on the menu bar, and then click Show Bounding Box, which this is hide. Okay, so now I have the bounding box hidden. So if I click on the circle, I can't see the bounding box. And then now we're going to go to View, and we're going to go to Show Bounding Box. Whoops, I was in Window. Okay. And now we can see the bounding box. All right, number five. It says, click and drag the various handles to note how the object can be resized. So with your mouse, you can click and hold your mouse button down and release once you have your object sized. So you can move it around, you can stretch it out, make it taller, okay? Move it around. Now, press and hold shift while dragging the top left corner ha handle to the left edge of the document. So I'm going to move this back down to where it kind of was originally. I'm going to press and hold shift on my keyboard, and now I'm going to click and drag it. And no matter where I move my mouse, I can constrain the proportions and stick with that original square shape. It's still proportional. We can go to Edit, Undo. Okay. Click the green circle to select it. Press and hold Alt. Then start dragging any corner handle. So Alt, and I can click and drag, and it comes out from the center point. As you drag, the object is resized from its center. While still holding Alt and dragging, press and hold Shift. So I'm going to hit Alt, Shift, and then click and hold with my mouse button. And the size of my object remains proportional. I can't make it wide or tall. And then let go of that. Whoops, I let go of the objects at different points. And there you have it. Okay, scale the circle to any size. And then go to Edit, Undo Scale. I'll have to go back a couple times. Okay. I'm going to hit Shift again and click and hold with my mouse and make that circle small. Click Select on the menu bar and then All. And you can see that I have all of the objects selected. They're all selected. I can click and move them all together. You know that because of the bounding box that goes around all the objects together. Using the skills we've learned in this lesson, reduce the size of the objects in proportion so that they are very small. So now I want to hit Shift, and I'm going to click and drag so that they remain proportional, but they're smaller. And Shift, and click and drag, and make them bigger again. Click on File. And I use this all the time. If you go down to revert, revert to saved version in the Adobe. Reverting takes your object back to its original version from the last time that you saved. Okay. Click view on the menu bar. And then hide bounding box. Select the star, and then copy it. You can hit Control C to copy it. Now we're going to click Edit on the menu bar, and then Paste. We've made a copy of the star. Press I on your keyboard, and that switched to the eyedropper tool. And then click the pink square. And now our star has changed to pink because we selected it from the square. We can take that star and we can move it over. 
go back over to the right side of our star, original star. Okay. So what we're going to do is line that star back up to the orange star, and now we're going to press the right, the button on the right, ten times, and move it over just like that. We're going to deselect all, so you can go to select, deselect, or you can just click on the white area. Click edit on the menu bar. And we're going to hit paste in back. Okay, so we actually have two copies of that orange star now. One is behind the other. The one that's in back is actually the one that's selected. Press the eyedropper, you can press I on your keyboard or you can click on the eyedropper automatically. We're going to click on that green. Our star did, does not look like it changed colors, but it actually has. The reason why it hasn't doesn't look like it is because it's behind. Now we're going to use the left arrow key and move it over 10 times. Okay, so... Okay, press and hold control so that your cursor switches temporarily to the eyedropper. Which we can go back to here and then press and hold control. It looks like mine's not doing it, but we can go back and click on our regular selection tool here. We're going to click on this white area to deselect. And we're going to select on the green circle. Okay, let's turn the page. We have that green circle selected. We're going to press and hold Alt, and it looks like we have a double cursor. And we're going to take a copy, click your mouse button down. We're going to take a copy of that green circle and move it over. And then release the mouse button, release Alt, and now we have a copy of the green circle on top of the pink square. Save your work and close your file.